It's morning in Bandundu region, Zaire, Central Africa. Our little friend Mwanza awakens. Like all children, he prepares himself for the new day. And with a chewing stick, he cleans his teeth. This part of Zaire is savanna tableland with generous rain and poor soil. People live off the land. The land provides their fuel, income, and food. The staple food is cassava. This is usually eaten as a stiff porridge. Mwanza and his family enjoy a cassava meal prepared in this way. He is then off to a game with his friends. A closer look at Bandundu region will shed more light on this story. This man tells us about a disease that has stricken some people in his village. The disease is called Konzo, which means tied legs. Konzo was first reported from Zaire in the 1930s. All reported cases were from poor rural communities where the staple food is cassava. The disease has a sudden onset, in most cases less than one day. In this region, 2 to 5 percent of the people are affected by Konzo. However, women and children are the most vulnerable groups. Konzo cripples the victim, which leads to many difficulties in managing normal life. In severe cases, there might be a disturbance of vision, eye movements, speech, as well as problems with swallowing food. The village people think the walk of the affected victims looks like the movements of a chameleon. A medical team composed of doctors and health workers from Zaire and University of Uppsala in Sweden came to Bandundu to investigate Konzo. We had the opportunity to talk to two of them. Dr. Bania, what is the role of cassava? Oui, le cassava ou le manioc est un aliment très important pour la population rurale en Afrique pour plusieurs raisons. Cassava is a very important crop for the population in rural areas of Africa. First, it is important for the diet. Both the roots and the leaves are edible, then it can be used in many other ways, for example, as a cash crop. The bitter cassava has certain disadvantages as it contains cyanogenic glucosides which can break down to form cyanide. Women virtually carry out all the processing activities. Cassava can be processed in many different ways. Here it is harvested, peeled, soaked in standing water for four to five days. Then it is dried. Cassava is traditionally pounded into flour. Cassava that is well fermented is also mechanically milled. The long duration of soaking and drying cassava releases the glucosides that result in toxic cyanides, the compound that causes poisoning. The traditional process of fermenting cassava for more than three days were followed until 1975. A new road was constructed. Traders requested women to make corsets from roots soaked for only two to three nights instead of the usual four to five nights. This enhanced the sale of more cassava to generate money. So, even if people buy their cassava, they can't be sure it is well processed. By doing a urine test, we made them aware of the problem so that if necessary, they could process their boat cassava by additional drying to make it safe for consumption. Samples of urine were collected from the villagers to confirm that they really had a problem with the inadequately processed cassava roots. They willingly gave us the urine samples 
which were tested for theocyanide concentration in their presence. Then the clear samples of our medical team were compared with the dark blue samples of the villagers and also with the standard curve. Everybody could see that those from the villagers contained more cyanide. Even though this is the case, women and children are mostly affected by Konzo. This we found in our studies. Women and children are more exposed to the cassava toxins due to their role in the family life and therefore have a higher cassava intake. Le diagnostic de Konzo is très simple. The diagnosis of Konzo is very simple and is based on three measurements according to the World Health Organization. First, there must be a visible, symmetric, spastic abnormality of the walk or when running. Second, the disease has a sudden onset and there is no progress of either becoming better or worse. This can be recognized when listening to the patient's story. Third, clinically exaggerated ankle or knee reflex, trembling legs due to contractures. Dr. Bania and his group are working on different methods to prevent Konzo, which also involves agronomists and anthropologists. It means education of nutritional habits and information on health. The emphasis of the local work is to educate the people of the village how to get rid of the shortcut processing of the cassava. A lot of things can be done to adopt good procedures. For example, the milling process which needs well fermented and dried cassava. Information can also be given in form of brochures, leaflets, education gatherings and role playing in the village. Livelihoods of 400 million people in Africa depend on cassava. In spite of the presence of Konzo disease, these people are able to continue a normal village life. Singing and dancing in the evening will greet the beginning of the night. <laughs> Thank you.